Your TI-84 can be your absolute best tool for acing the SAT if you know these tricks. Now I want to start with this one. To do that, we're going to go into our math menu and it's numeric solve that we're looking for, which is actually towards the bottom. I'm going to arrow up to get there more quickly. So if I arrow up, there it is, numeric solver, which is C. Mine's highlighted, so let's go ahead and hit enter. Now it's giving me an equation one and an equation two. This is really the left side and the right side. So for equation one, let me clear what I've got there. We're gonna use that negative four X squared. So the little negative at the bottom, four, use your variable key X, and then I'm gonna use the squared key, and then I want minus seven X. That takes care of equation one or the left side. I'm gonna arrow down. Let's go ahead and do equation two or the right side. This one is just a negative 36. Now we can hit okay by hitting that graph key. So I'm gonna hit okay, but it has not solved it yet. Notice that I still have that solve button. It says negative three. It's gonna give you the answer that's closest to the number that you type in here. Now our question says, what's the positive solution for the given equation? Let's type in a positive number. I'm just gonna type in the number five. This gives us a point to zero in on. I'm gonna hit solve. And there's my answer of 2.25. Now I'm gonna show you an even better way in just a little bit that will find both of your solutions for you, but you may or may not have that app. Let's clear what we've got here. I'm gonna go second followed by quit. And I wanna make sure that you know the fraction capabilities of your calculator. Now you can get to fractions by doing alpha and then y equals to get to that F1 function. And you've got several different fraction values here. You can also get there, let me do quit here. You can also get there, for some of you, you might have that fraction print key on the variable key. So you can also get to a fraction print by going to the variable key. Finally, and probably the most helpful fraction tool on your calculator is the convert to fraction. So let's say that I was doing something like um, 16 divided by 36 and I hit enter and I end up with this decimal, but my answer choices are as fractions. I'm gonna go to my math menu. The very first choice there is convert to fraction. I'm gonna hit enter and I get that as a reduced fraction. Next up, I wanna tackle a problem like this, which is a system of equations. I've got two equations. There are two different ways to tackle this, and I'm gonna show you both of them, starting with the one that I know all of you have on your calculator. Now, before I can get this into my calculator, I need to have all of my variable terms on one side and my constants, that 11 and negative 21, on the other side. So we're gonna subtract the 10x, we're gonna subtract the 5x, and we're gonna use the system in this form instead. We're gonna use a matrix to solve this, and when I put it into a matrix, in this form, all I need are the coefficients, everything but those letters. Let's go to the matrix menu. Trust me, this is so fast. I'm gonna go second followed by matrix. It's fast if you've practiced it. And then I wanna put a matrix in, so I am going to use my right arrow and get over here to edit, and I wanna edit matrix A, so I just hit enter here. And right now it says it's a one by one matrix, one row and one column, but I've got instead two rows, two equations, and three columns, three coefficients. So I'm gonna go two, enter three, enter. If you happen to get that mixed up, no big deal. It shows you exactly what your layout is. Now across this first row, I'm gonna type in just those coefficients, just my numbers. So I'm gonna do a negative 10 using the negative at the bottom. So negative 10, enter. And then I've got five, enter, and then 11, enter. And then for that bottom row, that second equation, the first coefficient is negative five, enter, five, enter negative 21, enter. So I've got my system of equations entered as a matrix. Now I'm gonna ask the calculator to reduce this to my solutions. We're gonna quit this matrix view. So I'm gonna go second followed by quit. And I'm gonna go back into matrix. This time we're gonna calculate. So I wanna go second followed by matrix. I wanna calculate, so I wanna do some math and I want row reduced echelon form. Remember I said you need to practice this to make this the fast way. RREF is what I'm looking for. It's not here. Let's arrow up looking for RREF. Mine happens to be there at letter B. I'm gonna hit enter and it says you wanna reduce or find the solutions for which matrix. I want matrix A. The easiest way to get that is back in the matrix menu. So second followed by matrix. I want matrix A, I want the name. It's already selected. I hit enter. 
I hit enter again. Now my answers are negative 6.4 and negative 10.6. Say you needed your answers as fractions. All I've got to do is to go to that math menu and I'm gonna do convert to fraction, choice number one there, hit enter, and then enter again. And we've got our answers now as fractions. X is equal to negative 32 fifths. Y is equal to negative 53 fifths. So let me show you the second method. The second method is actually even better, but you might not all have it on your calculator. It's one of the apps. So I'm gonna hit my apps key, and I am looking for the polynomial simulator, which is number seven. So see it right there? Such a weird name for it, but the polynomial simulator, and then hit enter. Take a look at what this does. Again, you might not have all of these. A polynomial root finder, root is solution. I could have used that for number one. I also have a simultaneous equation solver. Simultaneous equations are systems of equations. Let's do number two. I've got it selected, I'm gonna hit enter. How many equations? I do have two equations. I could change that, but I do have two equations in this example. How many unknowns? That's my X and my Y. I do have an X and a Y. And I'm gonna leave everything else as is. Let's hit the graph button to select next. Um, super nice, right? So now I can just type in those coefficients. So I've got negative 10. Um, let's do enter here. I'm not gonna change the plus sign. I do wanna change that next coefficient to five. Enter, and then I've got an 11. Enter, and then this is gonna be a negative five. Enter, I don't need to change that plus because I've got a five next. Enter, and then I'll use that negative sign for 21, and then enter. I'm ready to solve this one. Solve is attached to graph, so I'm gonna hit solve. And there are my solutions as reduced fractions. I wanna show you how being an expert with the calculator's graphing tools can help you solve questions like this. This one, it says, um, for what values of X does F of X reach its minimum? I'm just gonna graph this one and I'm actually gonna graph it and then ask the calculator to find the minimum for me. So I'm gonna to go to my Y equals screen. I'm gonna hit clear. And then instead of Y, I've got an F of X, but that's fine. Let's use our parentheses above number eight our variable key to type in x minus 10. Close that parenthesis, open up the next parenthesis, and we want variable x plus 13. Close the parenthesis. I am gonna graph this one, let me hit graph. The first thing that I wanna do though is to do a zoom fit so I can see the graph. I'm gonna go zoom followed by a zoom fit. It's not showing up here. Let's arrow up. Zoom fit is number zero. So I'm gonna hit enter and there I can see that minimum. So now I'm ready to ask the calculator to find that minimum. We're gonna use calc, which is second here of trace. So I'm gonna go second followed by trace. We are looking for a minimum value. So I want a minimum value, enter. And it needs to know a value on the left and a value on the right. So where do you wanna put it on the left? I'm just gonna use my left arrow here just to move to the left of that minimum and then enter. And it says, what's the right bound? Let's just use the right arrow to get to the right of that minimum and then enter. And it says, what's your guess? You can move your cursor to your guess. I always just leave it. Let's do enter. And there is my minimum. Now it asked for the X value where it reaches the minimum, not the Y value. So the X value is that negative 1.5 and negative 1.5 is equivalent to negative three halves. Your calculator can help with a question like this and do some unit conversions. Let me quit the graph. So I'm gonna go second followed by quit. This one also lives in an app. Now, if you're good at unit conversions, this would be faster to do just using a traditional unit conversion, but you can also use apps. I'm gonna to go to apps. I am looking for um, a unit conversion. It's part of the scientific tools here, which is number nine. I'm gonna hit nine and any key to continue, I'll do enter. And I'm looking for that unit converter, which is number two. We are looking at miles and yards. That is a unit of length. So I'm gonna hit enter to choose length. I'm converting from yards to miles. So let's go ahead and type in our 5104. So 5104 yards. So let's move that over to yards and then hit enter. And I wanna convert that to miles. So to convert that to miles, I'm gonna arrow over to miles, 
hit enter, and there's our answer, which is gonna be letter B. I've got two more really great tools for you. We're gonna look at one like this where we're evaluating a function, but I'm gonna let the calculator do it so I can do it much more quickly. Um, let me quit here. So I'm going to do second followed by quit, and then I want to do second quit again, and then exit. I'm gonna go into my y equals again. I'm gonna pretend like I'm graphing this one, but the graph is a really great way to evaluate functions. So y equals, I'm gonna clear what I've got, and I'm gonna type this function in as x squared, variable key followed by the squared key minus three, and then enter. Now I'm gonna graph this one, but remember we had zoomed before. I'm gonna zoom and then do a zoom standard. This is a great way to get yourself back to the default viewing screen, especially during an exam. I'm just gonna type the number six for that zoom standard. Okay, so here I am. I wanna evaluate the function at one, two, and three. Your calculator does an amazing job of this with trace. We are not going to arrow through this with the left and right arrows. Since I'm in trace right here, I can just type in the X value that I want. Those tables all start with the number one. So I'm gonna do one and then enter. So already I'm down to answers either B or D. The next one we want, the next X that we want is two. Let's do two followed by enter, and it gives me the value of one, and then I've got to do the last one as well, and so then three followed by enter, and the value for three is six, so our answer is B. I'm gonna to quit to get back to our home screen second quit. Last but certainly not least is a statistics question. So we are given a data set and the question says a sixth nest with 121 eggs is going to be added. And we wanna answer the questions about the two different data sets. The original one with nests A through E and a new one with an additional data point of 121. Let's get that data, the original data, entered into our calculator. So we're gonna go into our stat menu. So we're gonna hit stat. We want to edit because we wanna put a list in. So I'm gonna hit enter. Mine doesn't have anything in it. If yours happened to have some values in it, you would arrow up to the list name and then the list would show up down here. You would hit clear and then enter. Once I'm in that first data spot for L1, I can start to type my data in. So here I go. Data value followed by enter. So I've got my original data set, but I also want this data set with 121 added. Here's how we're gonna do that. We're gonna go up to the L2 name and we're gonna assign L2 to be L1. I'm essentially making a copy. All of those list names live in blue on our numbers. So I want it to equal L1. So I'm gonna go second L1 and then enter. So it's copied all of my values over, which is amazing. And I wanna add that last data value, that last number of turtle eggs of 121. Okay, enter. So now all I've gotta do is to find the mean of the original set and the mean of the new set. Let's go ahead and quit our list and go back to our home screen. There are multiple ways to find the mean, but I think the easiest one is just to go right back to that stat menu. So I'm gonna go to stat and I'm gonna choose calc and I wanna do one variable statistics. It's gonna compute a whole bunch of stuff for me, but one variable statistics will work. And then I'm gonna hit enter. Yours may not look like mine. If yours doesn't look like mine, you're just gonna put L1 in by doing second followed by L1. Because mine looks this way, I'm gonna make sure that I have nothing in the frequency list. If I do, I would just delete that. And then I'm gonna arrow down to calculate. X bar is 143.2. Okay, so we've got 143.2. Let's redo that. So I'm gonna go stats, uh, one variable stats. And I'm gonna this time do L2, L2, and enter. And I've got 139.5. So that mean is lower. That means that our answer is A. Now I've got two tasks for you. Number one is to practice all of these. So you're really quick using these tools when you get to this portion of the math SAT. The second is to drop a comment down below. Let us know what your tricks are for the TI-84. You got this.